Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Business in South Africa is poring over the contents of the carbon tax policy paper, which was released in May. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the contents of the paper, as well as some of the concerns being raised. Hi Terence. A carbon tax has been mooted for some time, but things now seem to be getting more serious. Yes, you know, we've made certain commitments internationally as South Africa, and we've got a, a sort of climate change policy paper out where we have a scenario of peak, plateau, and decline in terms of our carbon emissions. We also know that South Africa is a relatively carbon intensive economy, uh, mostly through our electricity generation, where we have uh, coal fired power stations dominating the mix, but also through our, our liquid fuels uh, uh, mix, which is also we use coal to produce uh, uh, a lot of our liquid fuels. So we know we're fairly carbon intensive. We also have an industrial base that is fairly energy intensive in its, in its makeup. We have smelters, we have mines, etc. So, you know, uh, we have in that context, there is some concern about how we should try and contribute to this, uh, this global I issue of climate change or mitigating and adapting to climate change. And we've made commitments at various international forums. And uh, part of the policy response, and it has to be seen as a package, government keeps reminding us, is this contentious issue of a carbon tax. And we had the um, initial discussion documents released a few years ago, but in May a more serious document was released by the National Treasury, which outlines a carbon tax uh, for introduction uh, from January 1, 2015, and phased in over a period with the first phase between 2015 and 2019, and then uh, a second phase or f subsequent phases thereafter. So yes, it seems to be getting more serious. What are some of the highlights of the policy paper? Well, the first is the, the price that has been put to a carbon, uh, a carbon dioxide equivalent of 120 rand a tonne, carbon dioxide equivalent. And uh, the other highlight, obviously, is that there will be tax-free th thresholds for different industries. Um, so basically, there's a, a price that's been put to carbon, but then there's ways of trying to cushion the, the blow for the industries to give industries time to adapt. And so people are, are pouring over what it means for them as possible as steel makers, as miners. Um, Eskom is obviously pouring over it in terms of understanding what it's going to mean for the electricity price. And I think the, the, that's going to be a big issue because the, the maximum uh, tax-free threshold for Eskom or a, a coal-fired power station is 70% of against that 120 rand a tonne. But there's also a, num a number of other issues in this paper, sort of trying to um, understand it in the context of South Africa's policy mix, because there, there's a lot of criticism whether, you know, whether the policies aren't pu pulling in different directions and whether a carbon tax uh, and climate change is a priority, particularly in a context where the world uh, isn't doing very much about this, and South Africa being what, about one to one and a half percent of world um, carbon dioxide emissions. And it tries to contextualize why this tax could be a useful instrument in terms of meeting our targets of first peaking, then plateauing, and then declining in our emissions. What has the response been to date, and what still needs to be done before the tax is instituted? Well, we're in a period of uh, public comment, so the, the, the document was released in, in May. Um, uh, the public now has a period where they can look at the contents of that document and make, by the 2nd of August, make submissions in writing to the National Treasury, both uh, pros and cons of the paper. So, you know, those most affected are really looking at what this means for their, their company and their sector. And a number of concerns have been raised around the lack of detail, uh, in how you measure, for instance, your carbon emissions, what, what is the matrix that you're going to use, uh, the lack of detail around the offsets, <coughs> because uh, you can also use offsets, um, so you've got a tax-free threshold, but you may be able to go be above that using different investments and different offset mechanisms, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of clarity yet around those offsets. And uh, also the revenue recycling, which is uh, you know, Treasury's sort of given uh, a, a sort of a hard line that it's not going to uh, have earmarking in its budget, um, but it will 
is prepared to recycle this revenue in a way that it really meets the objective of the carbon tax, which is to lower our carbon dioxide emissions. And uh, those recycling uh, solutions, I think, uh, or remedies that are uh, suggested, I think uh, business and those affected want a little bit more clarity on what that means. They talk about soft earmarking, which would be setting aside certain amounts of this revenue to go back into energy efficiency, etc. Talk about incentives that use the revenue for certain incentive schemes. But uh, I think there's a, there's a desire to know a little bit more about whether this is just a revenue raising instrument, which Treasury has uh, firmly rejected. And they're saying if they wanted to just raise revenue, um, they, they wouldn't be going through this complicated exercise of instituting a carbon tax. They could raise rates elsewhere. And, but you know, there's still concern about whether this is just trying to cherry pick from corporate South Africa, which generally is tax compliant, rather than finding other ways to raise revenue. But again, uh, as I said, re uh, Treasury rejects that notion. And I think uh, you know, there's also still the ideological debates. You know, people saying, you know, does climate change really is it a major uh, priority for South Africa? We are, in the bigger picture, uh, a very small emitter. So there are those tensions, um, and, and then there are obviously the climate uh, uh, skeptics saying that they n we're not seeing uh, the influence of uh, carbon dioxide emissions in the way that has been suggested. But I think that the Treasury is trying to steer away quite <laughs> clearly from those sort of debates and rather look at the, the technical aspects around the carbon tax and making it compatible with South Africa's intention to continue to grow both as an economy, grow as a manufacturer, grow as a miner, grow as an agricultural uh, economy um, without, uh, with, while also meeting our commitments to lowering our carbon dioxide emissions. So they, they are saying there is a, an impact, but their models suggest that they are able to mitigate uh, those impacts. They're able to make, in some ways, this a revenue neutral type in, uh, consequence for, for the economy. But there's still a lot of concern and people, are, a lot of industries are saying this is going to hurt and uh, it's not going to have a real major impact unless we have the whole world moving in the similar direction. So uh, we do look like an outlier because not many countries are pursuing a carbon tax. There are emissions trading schemes in the world. Uh, Europe is a particular uh, user of that sort of scheme. Australia has instituted a carbon tax. They're talking about evolving that to emission trading scheme. We're seeing uh, other international interventions. Um, President Obama made some announcements this week around trying to lower emissions from existing coal-fired fleet. We've got Chinese cities looking at instituting emission trading schemes. But we do seem like we're moving ahead. Uh, of the pack, and that's one of the big criticisms at the moment. Should is there any advantage in being an early mover, both in terms of dealing with this climate challenge, and then the whole issue of South Africa's competitiveness, where we're already in a competitiveness bind, it seems. So I think there's some way to go, and I think, to its credit, uh, Treasury is trying to uh, hear as many voices on this issue as possible. They've given a, a good. 18 months uh, of you know discussion and consultation period. We're in the com public comment period now that ends in August um, uh, the second. Then there'll be further uh, action around drafting the legislation, and then once that legislation is drafted, it will obviously go through more comment period. And the Treasury official said this week that they're not going to move ahead if they feel there are still serious gaps, both in the design and architecture of the carbon tax, as well as whether these consequences are too severe for the South African economy to bear. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.